What's up, everybody? Brett here, and I'm back today playing some more Battle Brothers. It's our Beast Slayers of Bastion Let's Play. Picking up where we left off last time. It's day 60. This... We're gonna have to talk about this, guys. Uh, this particular branch of our Let's Play is going on for quite some time. I... I'm happy that we beat Scrat in the last episode. But I'm starting to feel the, the pull, if you will, to go and do some other of the company origins that I haven't had a chance to do yet. Uh, I would love to maybe as a as a closing way to end this particular uh, company origin run, kill some linworms. I think that would be an awesome test of our power. They want us to go and kill monsters? I mean, this is what we're all about. We need to go and get some heads. Hunt for direwolves, webnecks, and nagzers around White Wolf's home and other regions. I'll accept that contract. Okay, we need a little bit of food if we can get some. I'll also buy a little bit of ammo. And our packs are not full. We're sitting at quite a lot of inventory space. Alright, man. So White Wolf's, where is that? Do I know where that is? Around the forest region of White Wolf's home. Ah, uh, here we go. So they want us to go kind of south. I think that the game spawns in stuff whenever they ask you to go places like this and hunt those things. But I think I just saw paw prints up here. And I did. Let's hope that these paw prints don't run into like a dead battle zone or... Oh, maybe they do. It looks like they were killed here at this battle site. Whatever. There are barbarians up here. Yeah, let's just move south. We're going to pass through the mountains now. I was hoping to see some beast tracks because we do have that increased radius of being able to see them. We come up on the mountains for a second. We saw something. But it didn't look like it was quite discovered. Come on. Give me some Give me some dire wolves. I've switched out some people who were injured after that scrap fight. Moved around some gear. Oh, man, I feel like there's a lot I wanted to talk about today. Some of it Battle Brothers related, but a lot of it not. Like, I feel like if you like this game and you like this kind of fantasy genre, you're probably also into, like, The Witcher. And I started watching that with my wife. And, man, as much as I love, like, The Witcher world, and I especially love uh, The Witcher 3 game, I think it's probably... And this is not an unpopular opinion. This is It's probably the best game I've ever played. Um, it's... You could, you could spend hundreds of hours in that game and feel like you're just not done. But watching the show has given me quite a lot of feel-bads. I'd be interested. I'm not here to, like, dump on stuff that other people think is good or to tell you what to watch. That is definitely not the purpose of my channel. Um, but I definitely have opinions. I have pretty strong opinions. I'm only two episodes in right now, so I'm trying to reserve a little bit of judgment. But I would be curious to know what some of you guys out there think of the show if you've been watching it. Especially if you already have, like, a lot of knowledge of the Witcher world. So you're coming in it with, like, a bit of an educated opinion. I'd be interested to know what you think of it. There's a lot of controversy around changing of ethnicities and things like that as well, which I don't really want to get too much into. But I will say that I'm a pretty firm believer of uh, taking the content that's given to you and keeping it as authentic as possible. Uh, I'm not a big believer in changing things for change's sake. And whenever I see uh, something like a big change that's kind of just been forced into a particular... Uh, show or movie or something like that all it really does for me is break immersion but I can understand why other people think it's important I would just err, always err on the side of keeping true to whatever the author or the creator's intent is that's kind of just my, always my general thought and I feel like the Witcher in that regards that's a minor nitpick that I think a lot of people have some people have it for more like overtly racist reasons uh, that's definitely not me. Um, for me, it's just kind of immersion breaking. Like, there are games, there are novels, 
Uh, there's mangas. There's, I mean, whatever you want. There's a lot of material out there with well-established characters. And we know what they look like. Uh, we know what their backstories are if you follow any of that stuff at all. Um, so to change it for, like, what could be the best medium in which to tell the story of The Witcher seems very odd to me. Like, a video game is a good medium. A book is a good medium. Uh, like a graphic novel. Um, but it's nothing is near as good as a long-form television series. Like, that could potentially be, you know, the best way to tell the story. And I feel like just to make changes to people's backstory, the way they look, um, it really, it changes more than that. And I was having kind of an in-depth conversation with my wife about it. It's like, it completely changes their motivations. A big thing in The Witcher, which is why I love it so much, and it, it really ties into Battle Brothers in a way, um, it's not a happy world. Uh, and it's something that you learn kind of the hard way from immersing yourself in the lore of the world. It's it's not a happy world. It's filled with uh, xenophobia, racism. Um, there's drug use and substance abuse. There's, you know, uh, violent acts, violent sexual acts. I mean, there's all the different tragedies that befall us as people uh, can be found in that world. And what makes it so compelling, and it always, you know, is what made it compelling for me anyway, is the, the moral gray, right? And it's something that I think Game of Thrones in the first several seasons, or, well, actually the books, to be fair, the books captured very well, and I think it's what people fell in love with. And so far, I mean, guys, if I took a shot every time someone said the word destiny, like, I would just die of alcohol poisoning. Like, that's, that's pretty much been the vibe of the show. It's it's just too ham fisted. I don't know. Curious what your what your thoughts are. I don't ever want to claim to be the guy who has all the opinions that you should listen to. And if you love something, the last thing I ever want to do for somebody is is crap on something that they think is awesome. Because I've been there. I've read a lot of fantasy in my time, some of which wasn't good, <laughs> but I still enjoyed it for one reason or another. I just hate seeing potential wasted. It's kind of the big thing. Uh, if you're a guy who loves fantasy, as I have for, for years and years, you want it to be as successful as possible because you know that the future of fantasy and popular culture really depends on its success and the more mainstream mediums. Game of Thrones opened a lot of doors, and I don't know if most people really think about that to give it, to give it credit in that way. But if Game of Thrones hadn't have caught on with all the quote-unquote normal people, we probably wouldn't have all of these uh, Wheel of Time. I know Robert Jordan's getting, uh, you know, posthumously, of course, getting his uh, series made. Um, I think even there's a Warhammer that's in the works. Warhammer kind of uh, almost like a detective noir type thing that's being made haven't really kept 100% abreast of that. But all of these things are only being considered by big studios because of the success of Game of Thrones. And every time something like The Witcher comes along mainstream and they kind of do it okay, but not, you know, not honestly not as good as they could, it just makes it so that we get less and less likely that we get more representation of fantasy. And stuff like Netflix. People stop taking those big risks. And it's especially sad for me whenever I see something that I know is good. Especially like on Netflix. There's a couple shows that were on Netflix for a while that were just some mind-blowingly amazing shows. And they never finished it. They they left them in season one or season two. Uh, one of the first ones that comes to mind, it's not exactly fantasy, but it might as well be, uh, is the Marco Polo show. If you never saw that on Netflix, that is awesome. Um, and it's, it's just a, a really well-told story. It's got, you know, fantasy elements to it. Kind of an, an oriental, uh, kind of almost like a crouching tiger, hidden dragon. But more of a mix. So not quite just like a Chinese influence. Uh, because you're dealing with the Mongols. The Mongol Empire was very, uh, it covered a lot of Asia. So it's got all these different flavors to it. Almost Middle Eastern. Um, and it's just a really cool, a really cool show. They did two seasons with a budget that must have been just absolutely insane. 
And then I guess not enough, not enough people watched it, and they ended up dropping it, which is super sad to me. Even though you've marched through plenty of forests, this one's Viridscapes, Viridscapes, I don't know that word, has you impressed. No doubt, Sigmund is loving a return to the tree's thick domain. I think he's a lumberjack. Which one of these is Sigmund? Getting hard to tell. Sigmund's on the sidelines. There he is. He is a lumberjack. Cool. So I did, actually didn't even know that. If you walk around in the woods with a lumberjack, they get some sort of happiness event. Good to know. All right, let's go for Pathfinder here. And, oh man, a one roll. But yeah, don't mind me, guys. Just a little bit of uh, exposition. I guess I'll take a two there. That feels super bad. And I'd rather take a four here and get five HP than all those other pathetic rolls. We're going to take Battle Forge for our front line. Nice. Happy to see a three and a three and a four. All right, good to go. But yeah, just basically saying, I wanted it to be good. I understand a lot of the criticisms that people are having with it. Ooh, we could take this fight, but that's definitely a tougher one. If it comes to the point where we've kind of wasted a bunch of time looking for monsters and we don't see any, I feel like the spawn rates are too low. For beasts. Like, I should be able to come into the wolves and see spiders here, wolves here, scrat here. I kind of don't like how empty it is sometimes. But we need to take fights. Because if we stop taking fights, we're going to lose out on a lot of money. Um, fractured hand, that's no good. Huh. We could switch out our spears for different weapons. We're currently holding a ton of different stuff. These maces do great jobs. Are flails awesome? Flails ignore... Yeah, let's do that. Flails go around shields, so we can switch that up there. That'll work. And then Geralt here, we'll pop him out to the side. So we're going to be fighting Legionnaires. We need to expect shield walls. So crappy that we're not finding any heads to collect. And we came all the way down here. Alright, this is some interesting terrain. Uh, honestly tempted just to back up. But because we have Pathfinder, which I'm still not entirely used to, we can push forward. And get some high ground fighting going. Alright, armor completely gone. That was the goal. But we've got to get up as fast as possible. We can't let them claim these really high ground positions. Okay, no armor, no armor. 48 versus 48. 13, of course. Another awesome thing I want to share with you guys was a, a show that I discovered that I didn't know existed that some of y'all uh, might be very familiar with. It's called Night Fight. It's a super sweet show on the History Channel. And it's the episode that I saw, I think it was like episode 7. It was just huge guys, like guys 240 pounds plus dressing in armor. And like in a pit fighting each other with blunted weapons. I thought it was awesome. There was like a moment where I was watching it where I was like, I don't know if I like this. Like I love MMA. Uh, I watch UFC whenever I can. I don't I don't get to follow it actively, but I, uh, I go back and watch a lot of fights. I was into combatives whenever I was in the army. Uh, I, was a, I was a teacher for a while, for about a year. Uh, it's basically like a mix between Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. There's some Judo in there. Um, there's a... Uh, little bit of small amounts of boxing, kickboxing, just just the really basic stuff that you need to kind of protect yourself. Um, but it, it got me interested in it back in the day, and I've kind of continued to follow it. So I watch UFC, I watch mixed martial arts, so a little bit of like dudes getting hurt doesn't bother me terribly. Let's switch out here. I want to get that axe on somebody. It doesn't bother me, but... I will preface this with a but. There's something incredibly, almost disturbing about seeing some guys that 
are basically they're, they're juggernauts in this armor they are like 300 pounds and they're smashing each other with incredible force with the amount of leverage they're able to generate from these like long handled weapons some of the weapons that we use here even i mean they don't have they're using flails blunted flails uh they've got big two-handed axes Yeah, I was just I was just found myself being very concerned for those dudes. And I felt for a moment what it must feel like to be someone who's kind of watching uh, you know, mixed martial arts for the first time, watching guys, you know, punch each other in the face. It probably feels that exact same way. It just I just felt uncomfortable. It was very strange. Well, we now find ourselves in shield wall hell. And we're going to see if we can't crush one of these flanks and then start collapsing on the back. The per person who's in the most danger right now is Horst. And I think I'm just going to shield wall with him next turn. He's got a six-man surround here. Wow, and they pushed me in the hole. All right, let's go for the big swing. And we whiff all three because they're all shield walled together. Feels bad. And horse is going to die. Almost guaranteed. Okay. Yep. There we go. There we go. Oh my god. Everybody's getting wrecked. Yeah, maybe we weren't ready for Legionnaires. I thought if we could just... Poke a hole right at the beginning. We'd be fine. But we're not able to bypass any of this. Dang, it's not looking good. Yeah, we I mean we haven't hit any of our any of our shots. To be fair, our odds weren't great. Maybe we reload this fight. I'd be interested to try it again. Instead of trying to push forward to take the high ground, which gave us some advantageous positions, but what it it made it so that when they stepped in on us, they could shield wall on the first turn. You know what? Let's try. Let's let's quit. We're gonna reload from the uh, from the auto save. Don't wanna don't wanna show you guys like the wrong way to do it. Plus, I was talking a little bit, and not really thinking. Let's try it this way. I don't necessarily I don't want to get any advantageous terrain. I just okay. Well, this is equally bad. It's happening because we're basically fighting them in the foothills. Uh but the general idea is I should probably just step backwards, make them come to us and then in the turn where they close ranks or they they actually meet with us in the front lines, we will have pulled them apart a bit and made it so that they can't move and shield wall and, and attack all in the same turn. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up and see and make sure that they chase us. And we'll try and keep it as coherent of a formation as we can. So yeah, forgive my reload, guys, but I, I think I was just talking a little too much instead of playing. So we lose any type of, you know, high ground advantage we were hoping to get, but that's not a big deal. Our boy Jost is slow. And I think this is Ulrich. I think Ulrich has like a lame leg or something. The big thing is we cannot let them shield wall. We don't have high enough stats. To break past it yet and when I entered this fight I could have sworn it was going to be more uh, auxiliaries than legionnaires but they're basically all legionnaires which is not great you know man I I think I messed up again guys we should back up one more okay we'll do it we need to back up one more because all we're doing is giving them high ground for their their polearm guys. I don't think any of them can reach us this turn. Let's back up. Back up here. Let's 
Back up there. Yeah, awkward, but at least I realized this mistake before it became a, uh, a real issue. We still have a turn that we can move. We're still in the same turn, that is. We haven't actually wasted any time. I just could have done it before they had any chance at all to move, which would have been preferable. We'll just take a shot, whatever. Get that banner out. Hike. Would love a bill hook. Okay, that was a little unfortunate. We needed him to step back. And we'll just rotate the rest of them down. It looks like the majority of the Legionnaires are coming down anyway. We'll just rotate this way. And now we've got essentially a turn to chill. And I'm not even going to mess around. I'm not going to shoot. Waste the fatigue. We want some of them to make it this turn. I'm curious if they will engage that way. We could step in and try and get an easy kill. Okay, I don't hate that. But these are just the auxiliaries. Might have been a bit of a mistake. Now we're getting locked down by the Legionnaires. Wow, four man surround on Baldur. That was such a mistake. Playing badly. Damn. And we're all like out of order too. With how we're moving. Yeah, this is terrible, guys. My bad. I got greedy. I thought I could one-shot them with these weapons, but that is not the case. So all I did was pull myself out and get stuck. And unfortunately, now they are going to be able to shield wall up. Even now, like, that doesn't do almost any damage. And we're missing with our biggest hammers and, and weapons like that. We've got to get those kills. That way we get the confidence. Get an increased chance to hit. Alright, happy to see that. Now, obviously... Ozymandias doesn't need help killing this guy, but I wanted to get him a surround so he could kill him as fast as possible. That'll free up both of them to come down and help. We'll take the 66% chance. And then Balder here is going to have to just shield wall. And fight for his life. There we go. And now we're in it. Shield wall. 44, 26... We're going to go for him, because at least we have a chance to get him. And then kind of clear up the surround a little bit. Alright, shield wall appears to be holding. We haven't taken any damage yet on Balder. But we might want to stop swinging with him. And we should try and break some of their shields. Ow. At least we got a free hit in. Everybody's moving in a little bit better directions. Who took that hit? I think it was just Jost. Okay. This is a big turn for us. We're going to pass here. We missed the 41. Let's let's bring out the log so you guys can see what's what's going on. Hmm. 
We could poke them and try and like push them out of their slots. Okay, one less guy. Go for the 33. Damn. Alright, shield wall. That's a 12. 21, 16. Yeah, just go defensive. We have to preserve our fatigue because they're going to keep hitting him. And every time we get hit, it's going to drain our fatigue. Damn, and he hit us. Alright, come on, man. 32% chance. The reason I take that over splitting the shield, because we might not even take the shield out in one, one blow. If it was one of the weaker shields, we could. Uh, but I think the tower shield is actually more resistant than that. Okay, now we have a few people in a bad situation. Might be time to consider dropping some dogs. Alright. And we're breaking up their shield walls. Let's step in here. Throw down a dog. Every little bit helps. Man, I can't believe we didn't get that kill. Perfect. Okay, now the big thing is we've got to get here in time to save him. Damn, no, he went down in two shots from the Legionnaire. We'll fight it out. Hopefully he's still alive. This is a dangerous fight to take on a whim. You have to respect the pole arms. And if you're not able to kind of one-shot these guys, it they gotta respect them. Maybe could have dropped dogs sooner as a distraction. But as much as any other race in this game, it's important to snowball against these dudes. You can't give them a setup turn. And we just weren't able to capitalize. Maybe these weapons aren't the best versus Legionnaires. They're great versus Auxiliaries, but I... Maybe we should have just equipped every two-hander that we had. Damn, we hit him in the head. Pretty useless. And we've got some people who are near dead now. Lock them down. Alright, and that gives us Berserk. But Ulrich needs to peace out. Unless we can kill this Ancient Legionnaire first. No, we're just gonna back up. Hopefully our boy's still alive. I feel like I haven't been getting as lucky with that lately. Six man surround, still couldn't hit him. Every time we miss with one of those big hammer shots, it just sets our DPS back so far. At least the Oryx still able to be useful. Rotate here. Damn, 
Damn, they're just gonna go for Joss. They might get him too. Yeah, pretty close. And we barely even touched this guy. Alright. Only one left. The question is, can we get him before he gets a chance to attack? Switch with the dog. And if we destroy his shield, I think the answer is yes. We also I should be looking to rotate out Jost. Alright, Jost is dead. Oh my god. Oh. Thank you. Everybody's exhausted. Would have been fitting if Joss could have finished that, but he wasn't even able to rotate him out. Everyone's too ex too exhausted to rotate. And our chances to hit are actually not that bad. And we're missing. And the dog takes the final kill. And Balder... Balder dies, damn it. I mean, for really pitiful loot, too. A bunch of helmets we don't want. Damn, at least we get our shield and helmet back. Balder, let's look at Balder's obituary. Been with us for quite some time. Was Balder a beast slayer? I think he was. But it's hard for me to remember. I'd have to go back and watch the tape. Or was he our caravan hand? No, that's Fur Thillman. Huh, I don't remember. I don't remember what his background was, that is. Well, we've got some, some stuff to divvy up. <sighs> Man, fights like that really take a lot out of me. I think I'm just old. Let's give Fineral the breastplate. Is anyone wearing anything worse than that? I don't think so. And we have a worn male shirt that we could have given to someone before that fight as well. Probably just switch it out for one of these. And this is just better than these big barbarian helmets. So now we've got these tower shields, which I kind of like using in the early game. They're heavy though. They're super heavy. This is only 10 fatigue. These are 20. But their defensive stats are 5 better. You just only have to worry about their durability. Kind of biting you in the butt. Okay, anything else? Take them out, put him in. Whew. Living shield has to go to someone. Let horse hold it. And surprisingly, we're, just, we're past these helmets now. As cool as the Ancient Legionnaire helmets are. We just don't need them. So we can sell all of that. Was there anything else that we picked up that was worth it? We had a long sword in that last fight. That was pretty cool with the raiders. We might have been better off just using spears. Our brothers... Their skills are so low on some of them. That we really need the bonuses from the spears to do work. These arming swords might have actually been better. Yeah, we wanted weapons that ignore armor, essentially. So let's look at the difference. Let's see the mace here. Maces are great weapons versus the Ancient Dead. We've got a ton of stuff to sell. I feel bad for losing a pretty old brother. But now we're, we're kind of beat up, and we should go and heal. I'm not feeling so hot about this... Uh, This quest that we're on either. There's kind of nothing here for us. I'm going to stop by Wolf's Hayden. See if we can make some trades. 
Maybe we'll find something. We can get up on this mountain right here look around. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of... Something that we could kill. I don't want to cancel the contract. I would much rather turn it in. Only partially filled. And this is a terrible place to do business. The long spear for 11,000. It's really not that good. 35 to 40. It's basically like a fighting spear. Probably has better numbers against armor and has really high durability. But we gotta sell all this stuff. Let's get some tools to repair our. Our armor. Our armor's all beat to hell. And I guess we'll get... Just some more basic rations. And I totally forgot. We had a fun name suggestion in the last episode for... Ossimandius. Uh, I think it was supposed to be on one of our... I think we have someone with a redundant name. Is it Jost? Yeah, Jost and Jost the Younger. And I think we can change Jost. And I thought this was hilarious. Is it two S's? So now we have Ozymandias and Ozymandias. Let me know if I spelt that wrong. I thought that was a great suggestion. I've been listening to a podcast recently where they were interviewing a guy who's like an Australian hunter. And hearing some of those stories was pretty cool. Just stuff, random stuff that happens out in the bush. I grew up in Louisiana, so like, I'm, I'm kind of familiar with what goes down in the swamps. But like, there's something about the, the stuff that happens in Australia that's just crazy. They were showing videos of a guy who just walks around picking up snakes. And he just has a bunch of snakes in his hand. Just carrying it. I don't know what he's doing. And then he takes the snakes and he puts them in like a rabbit hole and he uses the snakes to chase the rabbits out of the hole. It was pretty wild. Okay, this is bad. This is eight frenzy dire wolves that were fighting at night uphill. The game truly, truly hates me. We're not going to hit anything, y'all. I can feel it. I can feel it. And because they're dire wolves, they're on us fast. If we don't kill them quickly, we are going to be in trouble. I'm going to put Hound. Hound the Warhound. Whoever named him wasn't, wasn't trying very hard. Alright, Bloodthirsty. Gotta get these pikes out. We've got to get a kill. Over the 75 here. Spears are great weapons. And that's Ritter. I'm going to spear wall here because I think he's just going to jump in. Oh man, speaking of dogs, last night I went on a walk. And I, pro I, I wrangled my like 10th stray dog of the year. There's a friendly dog named Heidi. Yeah, they're gonna kill these dogs. They're gonna apply overwhelm and they're just gonna crush them. But better them than us. But yeah, she's a friendly dog. She had like a like a harness on with a handle on her back, which made it much easier than it normally is for me to wrangle other people's dogs and try and get them back to their owners. Oh my god. At night. Downhill is how we're fighting these. Hating my life a little bit. But anyway, so I, I, I get this dog. I've got her. I'm petting her. I'm just trying to make sure that she's not going to bite me. You know, you always want to be careful when you're dealing with someone else's animals. I don't know what type of training she has. I don't know if she's, uh, you know, some dogs have bad experiences with people, strangers especially. You never know. So I was just trying to use an abundance of caution. And the second I went to grab... Her, like harness 
and kind of like take control. A kid came out of the house next door with a dog and they started fighting each other. And that was it. So much for my like uh, control. She ran, ran, ran. I found her a little bit later, like up the road at a church. And at that point, I was able to like get a hold of her collar, collar owner. And it turned out it was a neighbor, someone I recognized from the, from my neighborhood, who was very happy to have her dog back. But she's kind of crazy. She has the same first name as my daughter, so she's always like, I don't know. She's too familiar, too familiar, and we don't actually know her. Sometimes you just gotta take nice people at face value, let them be nice. But sometimes also you gotta dial it back a little bit. You don't wanna be too familiar with other people's kids. It comes across mostly as creepy. Man, we're, our dogs are getting slaughtered here. But we need them to keep these guys back. We still can't hit them. They're running away and we can't kill them. Get up here. Alright, our armor's intact. We'll come here. That was great because it kind of knocked off his uh, his confidence. Warbrand's a great weapon versus dire wolves. So in case you're not familiar, the big difference between Frenzy Dire Wolves and regular Dire Wolves, I think they have stat differences as well. Uh, but the really big difference is that they apply Overwhelm when they hit. And Overwhelm lowers your chance to hit significantly, especially if they attack multiple times in the same turn. And if they get a lot of stacks of that going, it can be impossible for you to hit them. And we can look at that effect. It's something that, if had I thought about it, we probably would have got a lot of it on this crew. And also, had I thought about it, Jost would not be in the front lines taking the brunt of this fighting right now. We need to kill this one ASAP. Or we could just rotate him out. That's even better. Alright. And every kill we get drives them that much closer to routing. The big weakness of beasts, as always, is their morale. Alright, only one left, really. Get in there, get a big surround. But anyway, haven't had any experiences yet where I've rescued is a strong word, but caught someone else's, you know, stray dog and had them, like, turn and bite me. I haven't had that yet, but I fully expect it. If I ever see a dog, like, foaming at the mouth like this, they can stay lost. But I still feel like a responsibility, like, in my own neighborhood. If there's a stray dog that looks aggressive or is acting aggressive... Like, you either gotta call somebody, or try and handle it yourself in some way, chase it off. Uh, there's a lot of kids that live in my neighborhood. Like, it's a very family-filled place. And the idea of, like, a big stray dog walking around that can, that can hurt kids. No bueno. No good. Okay, that was the heads. That was all the heads I needed. That gave me eight. And we're in pretty pitiful shape for fighting. We really just need to find a place where we can go and sell stuff. We'll grab Berserk. Take a 2 there, a 4 there, and a 2 there. Solid. Let us return to Grossholtz. Ooh, so I'm trying to feel this this playthrough, but I, I wish uh, I, I really just want to get on to some different stuff. I want to experiment with 
some of the other company origins. So I'm going to consider this being perhaps the last episode. I'm still willing to uh, to take into account what you guys want. Beast of some sort. Okay. Talk pay. I accept your offer. Sure. It looks like a small thing. We'll knock this out. I'll take some people out if they're hurt, though. Ten dire wolves. There's many of them, but this is a pretty low paying gig, so I have to imagine that they're they're not going to be Frenzy Dire Wolves this time. And we're also not fighting them. Take that out. Put him in. We're not fighting them uh, at night. And hopefully we're not fighting them downhill. Yeah, it just looks like standard Dire Wolves. I'm really happy to fight them. I want as many pelts as I can get. I'd love to f cover all this basic mail with direwolf pelts. Alright. Perfect. And everyone who can spear wall should. I was hoping to hit that first attack, but we already have Berserk on him, so he's going to be able to, to do his, his deal. Get that spear wall up. No Berserk on him yet, sadly, but we've got another Spear here. Alright, bit of a whiff. But our ranged abilities are still better than our melee ones, so we're going to keep our crossbows and bows out. Two Wolves down. And no Pelts yet. So, I guess I'm trying to say that I'm looking for a way to cap this part of the series. I mentioned the Linworm fight. Going out into the wilderness and picking a big Linworm fight. Whether we win or lose, doesn't really matter. It would just be for fun. Uh, but I would want to try and employ some type of more thematic build than what we currently have. Because this is very samey for me. We haven't gotten to the point where we have enough gold and, and resources to really outfit the people that the way... It would need to be in order for my strategy to be effective. Damn, I was going to say if we land that hit, we get the kill, but not quite. Here we're going to do the old shoot and switch. Perfect. Let's go for the decapitation. Scare the hell out of him. He's running. I don't want to let any of them run, but our archers are just a little weak. Okay. And I don't think there's anything we can do to catch him. Uh, actually, that's not true. We could drop a dog. Um, but I guess we can let one get away. We're only fighting two of them now. Alright, now we're fighting none. Good stuff. Aim shot. Nailed it. Okay, well at least we got on top of him so he can't just run. We've got bleed affecting them. Alright, cut down. Still no pelts. One pelt? Are you serious? That's all I'm seeing right now. We might get more, but... Pelts are the only thing I want. We're gonna run them down. We got three? Okay. And let's be done. We have crowns to collect. And we can go back over here and make some more cool beast stuff. And maybe they like us enough to give us decent prices on things. 
We can check that first. Where's our pimp hat? I measure all things by the pimp hat. Yeah, 15 is pretty terrible. I'm looking for 18, that that type of region. So direwolf pelt mantles, that's what I want to make. Let's craft one, two. I can only make two. Do we have any armor that's good enough to put that on? Not really. Uh, I think I have worn male shirts. No. Basic male shirts are better than that. They're 115. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I would waste a pelt on something worse than a halberd. I think that's just the right call. And let's get out of here. Let's go to a bigger city. This whole area here is, is pretty good for hanging out and doing stuff. Hammerden. Hammerden. And Altenhof. Just a prospering village. They're friendly towards me. Alright, give me some... Oh, no. They've got a bunch of stuff going wrong here. No way the prices are good. And I can kind of already tell they're quite poor. And there's nothing here to buy, either. They've got issues. Abducted children and ambush trade routes. Yeah, this is to kill Hexen. In the spirit of the Witcher, I almost want to take this. But you have to hang out for a long time. And then there's nothing even to say that we're exceptional at killing these. Yet. I need some time to think about that. Maybe that'd be a cool way to, to finish it. In a way, Hexen are kind of like the ultimate beasts to slay. They gather beasts to themselves. Basically like you're killing the thing that, that has the beasts. They've got disappearing villagers. Nothing we want. They sell gems here. That's interesting. And once again, the prices are terrible. Now, we need to expect the prices to not be great because of the restrictions of uh, the negatives to our... Uh, I, forget how they, I forget how they phrase it for the company origins. But basically, prices are worse. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, we need to expect that. But that doesn't mean we have to give up and just sell things at terrible prices. Yeah, this is all bad. What we can do is hang around an area and do some quests for them and try and get them to like us. Alright, this is something super easy. We can knock this out. It might greatly affect the prices. Ooh, there's goblins afoot. I say as I look at these footprints. Okay, this is... This is a harder fight than... And they're running full speed away from me. This is a harder fight than 280 crowns suggests. I'm not worried about it or anything, but that's that's not a 280 crown fight. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, here we're going to go for Brawny. I'll take that four. I'll take... The two and the three, I guess. Alright. Two arms. If we can snipe out that marksman right at the beginning, this fight will be so much easier. Or less stressful. With my luck, their marksmen always hit and mine always miss. We'll see if that holds true. They've got some high ground we could fight over. Uh, but I'd much rather keep my shield wall mostly intact. Kill a couple of these thugs early. Make it so that the AI just can't get surrounds. They just won't have the manpower. And everyone up top here can rotate. Okay, they landed a little hit. Perfect. Take that. We'll take that. And I'll move down here. Man, I expected that to kill him. Otherwise, I would not have taken that shot. 
and we can kind of move forward a little bit with our crossbowmen. Uh, we're putting ourselves in range of their marksmen, uh, but everyone in the backs, their armor's all intact. Don't want to take an aim shot on him. I mean, you'll see there, Battle Forge does great work. Wow, javelins came out. Okay. All right, now we need to be a little concerned. And this guy that we should have killed multiple times can end up being a problem. Perfect. Put him down. And from the high ground, these should be pretty easy shots to make. Perfect. And he wants to run. So now we're in a lot less danger. Let's take two fifty fives instead of a seventy one. And I'm gonna go over here and lock him down. Spear wall. Perfect. All going really according to plan right now. And we're almost on top of this guy. We could drop a dog from Ozymandias and, and get him. And I would prioritize doing that if he had, like, a hunting bow or a tier 2 crossbow, but he doesn't. Wow, stepped up and shot me in the chest. That's what you get. That's what my daughter always says. I don't know where she heard that from. She's just like, that's what you get. Her crap-talking game is super strong. The big joke going around my house right now is everything is in your face or your face is this. Like your face is a butt. It's very like 90s in my house right now in terms of insults. My kids completely bypassed the whole farts are funny phase and went straight to like insulting. Ooh, man. Also, I wanted to ask you guys something just to think about. What, uh... If there's any other series that you guys are interested in. I've seen a lot of newer games. Some of which kind of look interesting to me. Some of which I've already bought and kind of just have them in case anyone wants to, to see them or I see an opportunity to make a let's play of it. Uh, yesterday I did uh, Retropolis. That was one of the games I saw. I got it on sale for super cheap. Uh, I had like a $5 Steam coupon too. It was like 3 bucks. Uh, but there's plenty of other games out there. There's I can't remember what it's called, but it's like an XCOM. Not a clone necessarily. I guess it's made by the same people. Um, but that game looks pretty sweet. You probably know what I'm talking about if you, uh, if you follow that. I don't remember the name off the top of my head. It's something Phoenix maybe? But there's a lot of good games out there. I picked up um, Bad North, which is kind of a Viking theme, little like almost, it looks like almost like a mobile game more than anything. Uh, but it seems fun. I picked it up. It was borderline free. We're gonna kill these thralls real quick, and I think that'll be the last fight of the day. Um, but yeah, there's tons of stuff I could be doing on the channel as well. Uh, I'm trying to wrap up Darkest Dungeon, and this particular part of our series, Battle Brothers, isn't going anywhere, guys. I just, I love it a heck of a lot more whenever they come out with new content, though. And I'm just hoping that they're going to come out with some new stuff soon. Last thing I ever want to do is get tired of playing one of my favorite games of all time. I'm going to shield wall here. Step in front. Because Spinneral does not have a shield, and these guys all have throwing axes. So we'll see what the gods of RNG 
decide is fair today. All right, here we go. Hold on to your butts. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Seems fair if you look at the odds. Their chances are in the fives. Wow. Screw you, man. <laughs> All right, so they've got four dudes with throwing axes. That might be the first time I've ever seen that. That's a lot of dudes. Okay, we're not going to step forward because if we do that, we can't attack in the same turn. That's one of the biggest guiding strategies of my Battle Brothers career is never move into a position in a turn where you can't attack in the same turn. Let the AI do that. And you just sit back and reap the reward of them being bad. Oh, we don't have quick hands yet. It's all right. And then we'll move up here. Field wall again. Move up. Field wall again. Spear wall. Let's see what they decide to do. And we'll just wait. Dang, they got past a double shield wall. I guess their their minimum roll is a five. I don't know if it goes lower than that. Man, I can't believe they're so content to sit back. To be fair, we're really sucking when it comes to finishing them. Let's get up there. Come on, guys! This guy should be dead 100%. I'm closing the distance because I think I can get this kill. And indeed I do. Shield wall up. Now we're going to close the distance because we have the numerical advantage. They're also freaking out. So sometimes you can really push a, like a resolve check. And because they're currently stuck holding these weapons. I don't know if they have quick hands. Yeah, we'll step in here. Boom, routed. So you gotta really pick your time to advance. And that's what we did. That was a lucky shot, but I'm cool with it. And they got a stun on us. Need to get our two-handers and everything up. In a position to fire. And miss. Alright, he's dead to his bleed. But we gotta lock this guy down with the antler. Alright, he hit us twice. Jesus. Get a better surround here. We'll just go for a mostly full surround. And lower the foliage. Perfect. Alright, nice little easy fight. We got a lot of levels in this episode. Yeah, and now we're at the part where we're like completely full of junk. I guess I'm just going to throw away knives. Whatever. Don't need to worry too much about this super junk. But even if after, you know, these quests get done, they still don't like us enough. They still have issues with their prices. Uh, we can still sell the junk without too much worry. I don't need the best prices to sell my stuff. Uh, but, yeah, the prices are so bad. We've got to get rid of the, the real trash. Like, that's super broken. These shields are never going to be worth much. 
Neither are these. We're just kind of holding a few as backups. That'll never be worth much. A stick will never be worth much. Short bows, all this ammo. I really wish you could unload quivers. We need to give the bandages to someone. And this meat. We don't want to eat all this bad meat. But we'll keep some of it, I guess. It's feeding us. And we need to buy that last stack of tools. Alright, guys. Hopefully this was still a fun episode to watch. We killed a lot of beasts, which is what I'm all about in this run. But, yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts on all the different subjects I've talked about today. I feel like I don't... I want to love The Witcher. I do love knife fights. And I want... I honestly want to move on, I think, from this company origin into a different one. I think we've experienced enough of the start, and that was kind of the primary goal. Uh, but, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. Uh, once again, though, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. I hope you guys had a good holidays, and you're going to have a good New Year. In case uh, I don't make another Battle Brothers video for a day or two, uh, New Year's is coming in pretty hot. So, take it easy, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.